Hey everyone, I'm just editing the video now and realised it's missing a wonderful intro. So basically I'm back in the studio this week working or continuing to work on a piece from two weeks ago. But I'll jump right in and show you what I've been up to. Hey guys, so I just um, wanted to point out a few minutes ago this piece looked incredibly different. I've just mapped out some some new lines here. Perhaps it's not very good on this one. I'll put it on the okay, so it's on the white wall now. You can see like the original shape um, here. And here how there's this like angular line. I kind of just want to discuss the um, aesthetical choices that you have to make. And I said about two weeks ago that this was I was very happy with the top, but on reflection, I actually think it's a bit amateurish and there's a fair way I can go with my own personal aesthetic. So I've mapped out these new lines here and I'm going to get rid of these two pieces. Um, when I first started working on it a few weeks ago, I said that I wasn't quite sure what the exposed wood was going to be, but now I've got to that um, stage in the production of this work that you can then make those, again, aesthetic judgments that you're not able to do because you don't have the required information at the time. You can't plan out the entire piece. It's much more of a uh, an organic process making it. Um, yeah, so the, the, again, the very vague baselines are there now and it's a couple of hours work to, to really fill it in and see um, what happens. The only danger is um, overworking it. It's quite a common statement in art and it's not um, it's not what you draw or what you paint or what you what you make, it's what you don't make. So it's it's sometimes you can absolutely overwork the surface and that's something that I think some people don't really realise sometimes and I um, sometimes fall into that trap. So I have to be quite cognisant of that and remind myself that not to overwork the surface. And that's also why it's good to work in units of, of, of 10, 15 pieces. If you're just working on one piece solidly, you, you lose your objectivity and with this, that two week space between working on it really demonstrates that, that objectivity is still there. But I think that explains what I'm doing and I'm now going to uh, continue. So I need to cut this, it's not good. So that's far, it's far better now. This bit's been taken out, it's a bit of a mess, but uh, I'm gonna tack it all together and it'll be nice and neat. So if you have a look at this now, it used to come down beyond here and this line, when this is all meshed together, now this is actually inside and behind the line here. So basically there's a much nicer flow to the piece um, aesthetically and now I'm quite happy with um, the outlines of the top half. Sadly, the bottom half, this line comes in here and all of this is in the way. Now structurally, there's this little metal pin behind there that's holding the two sides together and I'm worried that if I take this out, it's going to um, put a, a, a lot of pressure on this join down here where the wood um, where, where this wooden support attaches to the bottom of the wooden frame. So, I think I'm just gonna continue working and let my brain subconsciously work it out. Yeah. Okay, so a minute ago I chopped this, uh, sorry, it's upside down and back to front right now, but so you can understand what I'm doing. I just chopped this one off um, because here's the inside line and this is now inside the, uh, sorry, the outside line. So basically when it's seen from the front, um, the sub, the frame structure is gonna be hidden. Somewhat not too dissimilar to this um, piece. So you can kind of see the, this is the support, the, the frame, um, behind it and that's quite a similar situation to this 
when I first started making it, I wanted to accentuate the frame and actually show off parts of that round structure underneath. But as I've been working on it, it's, um, yeah, I told you it's an organic process. So this is the only part of it that will actually be exposed from the front. Um, but anyway, I'm bringing you over here because I'm going to cut this off here, or maybe here about here, but it's going to get rid of this, this, um, uh, joining piece which is going to affect the structure in my opinion so I'm now putting in some other um, metal uh, just just some big metal screws basically to try and give it some rigidity and hopefully um, prevent any warping later on which is always a danger with these types of works So looking much better now, just cut that bit off. Ooh, a bit further back. Yeah, now you can see how this is the post that I just cut off, and the entire thing is now, the entire subframe is completely covered by, by the surface. Let's fill it in a bit more. So after working on it, um, pretty much all day today. It's finally, uh, well, taking shape. You can see now the lines that have been mapped out and how um, the wooden beams that were both situated here and here are now hidden. And yeah, I actually think the shapes, I'm looking at it through the camera, but the shape is, is quite nice. You know, there's a lot of contemplation that you have to do when you're making the piece and yeah, some days it looks very good and some days not so much and then yeah in time it kind of the dust settles and you see the piece for what it is but i think that's enough for this week and um i'm kind of trying to find my my how do you say that like a, a routine with these vlogs and yeah it's been about six months now that i've been doing these and you know the first couple of months is about learning the 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 craft uh, so to speak you know how to edit and how to record and the shots that you need to make it interesting and um yeah the the, the I suppose that you know the dynamics of, of filming a vlog yeah once i learned the the basics i then did like in january this uh i call it like the 30 30 challenge it was really just to push myself in order to learn how to really pump out these vlogs in a in a in a in a in a decent time frame rather than spending hours and hours and hours editing vlogs rather than making my artwork the idea is this is a documentation of my life as an artist and not the product of my artwork um what i'm getting at is each week i kind of do uh, i show you what i've been doing in the studio and some weeks i go to to set up an exhibition or I uh, go to uh, uh, a gallery and explain or, or uh, explain my opinion on it afterwards or I do a review of it, that's the word. But yeah, I kind of want to say what I'm going to be doing next week. Yeah, I'm going away in the summer and I've got about two months now to kind of get this unit finished and I've, and I've, and I've planned to, I think it's 12 pieces, 12, 14 pieces or something. Um, I've got it written down um, back at the house. Yeah, and that involves really getting all the pieces at the same stage. You know, all the frames are done now. Most of the surfaces are done. I've just got to get um, all the works ready for painting. So I call it wet season, and it's basically where um, where I just cover the studio in uh, in plastic sheeting and and basically painting every day in order to get that nice texture that I that I you know that, that I work with in my my style but there's about three more weeks left where I've got to get all the string work done and then I'm going to convert the studio and then there's three four weeks of painting before I head off so my point is it'll be studio 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 work for the next couple of weeks I think so a lot of studio vlogs and just um yeah documenting and showing you what it is that I'm up to but I've spoken off and um yeah, I shall see you next week where I will be back here. I am almost certain. Bye. Oh, I need a shave.